from what we demonstrated earlier on removing bearings and seals on this Kawasaki and there's a lot of other manufacturers out there that use this the seal is actually inserted from inside the motor we can't just we can't use our old pry method and pull this seal out to change it so if you have crank seals go out on some of these engines it requires you to pull the motor and split the cases let me flip this over and take a look at how the bearing is uh, obviously in the way of that seal as well so typically what we're going to do is we're going to with it being this much work we're going to replace them both but I just wanted to demonstrate a couple different ways that we can do this in the last video you guys saw where we used some type of driver we heated it up and we drove both of them out the seal is not touching that bearing okay it's just riding next to it if the seal were touching the bearing it'd be too deep okay so when I crush this metal against the bearing ultimately it will hit the bearing and then push it out but I'm going to show you just as, as a way to start to use some of our other tools here do you see here you guys got a in your tool kits I believe you got something like this yep. does yep. that look right okay this is a great starting kit it's got some chisels some punches or whatnot as you really start to move into being a uh, doing more mechanical jobs here's more what I call a master kit from snap on here and one of the things that this comes with you can buy this separately this thing is going to be your best friend is this is a holder so you don't have to smack your hand oh, yeah they're heavy huh. and do you notice how the tool has flats yep. okay I'm gonna make sure and put the tool against one of those flats I'm gonna crank this baby down if I wanted to I could even lock this nut to be really intentional and then what I could do is I could go in here and then you know smack whatever I'm trying to remove back and forth without hitting my hand okay and, and for what I'm gonna do today I don't want to use this so you can see here uh, a bunch of different types of punches and so on now another thing I've got here is uh, these are just little totes from uh, either dollar store or Walmart or something I really like where I've seen these now where they don't have the holes a great way to just store a bunch of tools in your toolbox here so I'm gonna look around here I got some chisels and I'm looking for some uh, nice good flat ones here I like this guy here I'm gonna kind of test this out and what I'm trying to see is if I have enough grip to when I heat that bearing what I could do is go back and forth okay so I could get it hot and I could hit a tap a tap a tap and I'm not getting I'm not getting much of a bite on there okay so I'm going I'm to heat it up and see what that looks like. And then uh, one of the other things that you eventually are going to have to have is a brass set. Why would you want brass? Brass is very soft. soft. It's soft. So this becomes a consumable tool. As it wears and it flares out really bad, you can grind it off and dress it and make it flat again. But these will wear instead of hurting other parts. So uh, eventually you're going to want to have uh, something like that as well. Make sense? Well, let's do this. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to start with, we got a temp gun and heat here. Before I'm really heating, there's no sense of me intentionally having oil in here, right? So I'll get that oil dried up. The chances of this combusting or something are very minimal, but why take the risk, right? Where are we at, Robert? 135. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Right where you were just at, we're at like one I'm going to go ahead and flip this. And now, I'm going to just try and heat from this side. So, do you see where the where it's all raised up here? That's that support, right? Mm -hmm. 180, 190. Why don't you hold this for a second right there? Two. So, I'm going to go ahead with my uh, desired punch draw, some hot. This is okay. Back up. What I'm gonna try and do. Is trying to go back and forth. I'm just not getting enough of a bite. I'm sorry. Push. Ready? Yeah. Now I'm gonna switch corners here. So I'm going, I'm picking different spots. Okay, I'm just going to see if it's moved. Does it look like it raised up at all or not? Yeah. Did it? A little bit? A little bit. Yeah, Because it was bit. flush. Well, if I'm unsure, do you see how I'm hitting? Yeah. So it, it did move a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that's how you do a, 
a back and forth method. Let's see if we can't just drive this out. Can I get you to shove that against me nice and hard here? There we go. That's a right. different way of doing it. Does it make sense? Yeah. Would, do you guys understand or agree that this is a less desirable way of doing it? Yeah. Okay, the reason we were doing this for our lab is I wanted to be able to put, paint a picture of how this seal is in, installed in here. Okay, and we're going to point out and look at a few different areas in here. Number one, you could see that the seal, would you agree, is pretty flush with this surface? Yeah. Almost looks like it's even uh, crooked right there, doesn't it? Can, I don't know if you guys could see how it, it, it seems flush right here, but do you see right here where it's higher? Yeah. Yeah. What's that say about that seal? It wasn't, installed correctly. it wasn't installed in there correctly. So that means that the last person did not get this seated. Now I would not want to take this bolt and be digging around on, on this seal like this. So this would, I would have the right size large one without the bolt to be able to do that. Does it look like I lowered it in there now? Look and go right across there now okay so we're gonna replace this seal but the thing I wanted you to see is do you remember how I told you what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a relationship today to these bearings and seals that I said they don't touch each other okay so if you look here do you see how Kawasaki has this machine lip that's higher than the flat surface of the seal Yeah. so the bearing is gonna bottom out against that make sense yeah. So, Mason, why don't you come over here, and I'll let you, this is your motor. Uh, George, this is yours, too. And uh, why don't you guys uh, go ahead and drive that. I don't care which one of you, but I want you to drive the seal all the way out. And this one will go pretty easy. Oh, man, you know what? I love his technique. Go ahead and keep going. Did you notice how he just tapped that light? Okay. S step back. It's hot, it? Guys, here's here's the whole thing for te technique. Is as, as mechanics here, we gotta we gotta be fragile. So what I don't want to do is be sitting here and swinging like this because the other thing is I take a chance of missing and hitting the engine case. Are you with me? Wow. So if you notice his technique, he was even holding the hammer up here higher, and he was just baby taps like this to kind of test his work. So it goes against all the laws of using a hammer. We're always supposed to grab it back here and get a full swing. Guys, you know what that kind of work is for? Right Construction. When we, would, uh, when we would go to install this, now that that's out, uh, this area, can you kind of see where there's carbon tracking from when the engine ran, where you got these little dark spots here? Yeah. That's normal. That's the oil and, and combustion that got behind the bearing. We want the seat really good and clean, but now you can see why that seal has to be installed from that direction. Let's see, there's nothing special about this seal. It actually just has the, the same size OD all the way around. A lot of times these seals will have a lip back here that will create the stopping point. So it'll have a raised lip machined into it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, now here's the, here's the difficulty installing this seal. You notice here that we need to really drive on the outside of this, okay? So we don't want that bolt in there. And do you notice how in the installation of this, we're gonna need a wider tool? Yeah. And we're really gonna want a much wider one, but it can't be wider than the ring where the bearing's gonna sit in this case, or we won't get it seated all the way. I'm gonna tell you right now, do, do not, as you build your skill sets, don't be this technician. So as I just kinda, remember I said you always just start these by hand? Okay, so this guy, don't, don't be this technician that's going in here and trying to punch these in with a punch. You need good bearing and seal and installation tools. I don't even care if you think, well Shane, then I'm, I'm just gonna switch to this. As I, as I sit and try and tap this in, and I'm not, I'm not hitting any surface that would be a problem, but what may I slip and hit? How about that spring? Yeah, yeah. Or poke a hole in it because I swing too hard or something. It's just not the right way to do it. You're gonna see plenty of uh, videos and people that use punches to put them in and uh, we'd rather use the, the right tools to get those uh, inserted properly. Okay, we're gonna set this aside. And I'm gonna show a couple other seal problems that are installed incorrectly. Can you give me that case, Chris, right behind you? So this, this is pretty cool because when we looked at this, and there's a service manual right there. When we first looked at this seal, 
how many people think this seals in backwards? Me. Look at where the spring is. Yeah. The spring usually resides on the oil side. Remember that video we watched today? Mm -hmm. And there's two, two applications where you might see a spring on the outside. This one here, which I was surprised. I thought it was in backwards. And we went and questioned the manual. We wanted to try and figure out, hey, what do they say? And suspension. A lot of the time on fork seals, you're going to see that spring. Where it, but what, what you need to know about a fork seal is there's two springs. There's one above and one below. The top spring on a set of forks is trying to keep the bug guts and the dirt and the stuff out. And the bottom one is trying to seal the oil in. Okay, so we have a dual spring. So we got to looking at this, and, and then let's go ahead and flip it around and look at the back side. As we look at the back, now doesn't that look like a normal oil seal? Yeah. Okay, so it looks backwards, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna set this case up just like this. You can see half of the reed here and that this is the right case, okay? The left case that we don't have would, would have the other side. So if you just look at the shape of this, this is the right crankcase cover. And what I want you to see here is in the service manual, <coughs> we're under the transmission crankshaft. Look at what they show. This is the left and right crank cases. And notice where it says outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at the cutaway. And do you see where the spring is? And do you see where the oil lip is? Oh, okay. That seal is installed the correct way. And if you look at the left crank seal, do you see how it's more of a traditional way? Okay, so you know what, we always say this all the time, we gotta be really careful not to say always or never. Uh, we can't use those qualifiers because we're gonna get ourselves into trouble. I, I'm gonna bet you this, I'm really curious if the aftermarket service manual would spell this out in that much detail. I really, I really don't know. While we're looking at this manual, this is another specialty tool that is an adjustable seal puller. Do you see how you can adjust how wide the seal is and then pop it out? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pretty neat seal puller there. So just adjustable. So this bottom one is the base. It's actually on the outside of the case and it's gonna grab the lip on that and you're just gonna use leverage and pop it out. Okay, well I wanna show one more case. Where's the YZ case? We've got a cool opportunity today. Uh, it's funny how this stuff happens at the right time, but I'm gonna make sure and get photos of this one too to put in our curriculum. Can you actually see where the seal was driven so far and it hit the bearing? Look at how we're missing parts of the seal and the springs actually exposed. There's two other things that I see that get us into a lot of trouble. Do you see all the silicone around the top here? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in a second. And I also know that the seal is installed too deep because it's above, well, there. You can actually see right here where it's above the surface. Can see that? You can actually see how high it is there, right? Now here's proof, and this is this is kind of cool here. Um, Sean did a good job of, Sean and Chris, right, are working on this one. These guys did a really good job of noticing some, some stuff and came and got me. What did we say about most all oil seals? When they're installed, they should be flush. Look how deep that is. And you see that machine surface. Well, so the technician working on us probably just didn't know better because look what they did on the transmission seal too. So do you see how that one's kissed the bearing? So what do we know about that seal? Right. Well, here's the thing too. If that seal's damaged, what did it let into the motor? Dirt. dirt. So that bearing got, you know, definitely some dirt. We definitely want to check that out. But uh, I'm going to take some photos of this and, and definitely get them put in. Another thing I could see, and this just might have been from removal, but go ahead and look at the shift shaft. Do you see how it's crooked? You can actually see how it's lower here and higher here. Okay, so that's not going to do a very good job of sealing, is it? Okay, all right. Well, those are some different examples of uh, oil seals and how they need to be installed. You can't trust the last person on when you look at something, go, well, I took it apart that way, so that's how it has to go back together. Uh, guys, though, there are seals, just so we're clear, that they are recessed in there, and I, I've seen those a fair amount of times on wheels, on motorcycle wheels where it has a collar or spacer and it needs something to go uh, to basically ride in that groove a little bit to kind of center it. And I have seen those recessed in, but it's about the only thing I can think of on an engine that ever has a recessed seal.